Hey guys, what's going on? It's Matt from Maui Astrophotography, and tonight we're shooting the moon. All right, guys, as you can uh, clearly see, we've got the moon here. Um, I'm using my 200 to 600 millimeter Sony lens, um, and I wanted to show you some pretty cool features uh, right now. I'm just going over some of the basics of this, but um, generally, you like to keep your shutter speed and your ISO relatively close to each other. One really important thing that I like to keep in mind is that my situation that I'm in as far as lighting goes may be a little bit different than your situation. The moon could be brighter where you're at. Obviously the moon is going to be different sizes when you shoot, um, unless we're shooting at the same, the same time period, of course. But um, I always recommend to people to kind of play around and experiment a little bit with uh, their ISO and apertures and their f-stops. Just kind of depends on what you're looking to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to frame up my moon. Um, I've kind of purposely put my moon a little bit lower in the frame because I'm going to be talking and I'm going to have to adjust it as I'm shooting because um, as you can see the moon is going to be going across the screen here pretty quick um, just because I am zoomed into 600 millimeters and I'm also using the Sony a7 III um, which does have a crop sensor as well too so technically I'm getting uh, 900 millimeters out of my lens right now so uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually increase my f-stop. Currently right now this uh, Sony lens that I'm using, when you're at 600 millimeters, it automatically goes to f6.3. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to increase that up. I tend to find that my lens um, kind of has a sweet spot at about f11 for moon shots. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. So we're all set there. I'm going to increase my shutter speed just a little bit here to we're going to do 320 for my ISO. I'm going to go ahead and kind of play around with this a little bit and just kind of take a look at it. I'm going to kind of eyeball it. Um, it's looking right now about 400. It looks like it's pretty clear and accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and focus now on the moon. And I'm going to use the manual focus. So whenever I'm shooting, I'm shooting in manual. So I'm going to go ahead and focus this in a little bit. And you can see um, the, how big the moon is getting. So perfect. All right. So I think I've got my moon in focus. It's looking really crisp right now. Um, another cool thing is I can actually zoom in even further. Look how crisp that is looking. Um, when you zoom in this close, especially when you're using a huge telephoto lens like this, you can clearly see when I touch the camera anyway, it's going to start bouncing. Um, for that particular reason, I am going to be using my shutter release button. Instead of using a intervalometer, I want to make sure to use the shutter release. Um, I'm currently right now on a tripod, just on a picnic table here in my backyard. I'm going to try not to touch anything just because again, like, like I just hit the table right there and you can see it bouncing. So any little movement is definitely going to affect your image. So, um, I'm going to kind of zoom out a little bit here. So you can see in the short amount of time that our moon has already moved pretty far over. So I apologize. I'm going to have to adjust this a few times during this as I'm talking, but generally I like to kind of shoot it kind of a little bit on the lower side just with the anticipation that I know that the moon is gonna continue to rise up when I'm talking so so another reason why I'm using the shutter release button here too is because it is really windy outside tonight so when it gets windy I obviously don't want my shutter speed or my shutter to be going off at the same time so I'm gonna kind of take shots in between the wind bursts I'll go ahead and take a couple there as long as it's not going. And so once again, I'm using the shutter button and I'm, I'm manually telling the camera when to go ahead and press uh, the shutter down. So I generally like to take a couple of shots, like maybe five to 10 shots or so, just as long as the moon is right there 
kind of in the center of my frame. Um, just depending on the image, sometimes I will stack the images in Photoshop and sometimes I'll just take a single exposure and that will be good. But right now this is looking pretty good, pretty in focus and um, I'm going to go ahead and try a few different other things too. Um, whenever I'm shooting the moon, I don't like just to stick with one setting. Like I want to change my ISO and I want to change my shutter speed a little bit and just kind of play around and see which um, what I'm going to get the best image quality out of. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And generally, as a rule of thumb, for me personally, I find that when I lower my shutter speed, I'm generally going to lower my ISO. It is not always the case. It really just depends on how you're shooting. But if I raise my ISO, I mean, this is ISO 2000, you can clearly see that the moon is blown out. And obviously, we don't want that. Um, it's, it's better to shoot a little dark, and then we can always adjust it in Lightroom. But... Right now, um, that's looking pretty good. I'm at uh, 1 250th of a second, F11, and ISO at 320 there. So I'm gonna go ahead and reframe up. I'm gonna go ahead and fire off a couple shots right now. And as you can hear, it's still pretty windy out, so I'm a little hesitant. I'm trying to... Uh, take images in between the gusts of wind, but hey, look at that. Isn't that incredible just to see the moon like that? I'm going to refocus. Uh, here we go. It seems to be about the sweet spot right now, but fire off a couple shots here now that the wind is not going crazy. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So the next thing I wanna take a quick uh, moment to talk a little bit about is when you preview your images, um, this is what my preview looks like on my, my histograms over here, my white, my red, green, blue. Um, obviously, as you can tell by the white flashing screen that it's completely dark behind the moon all of that black space there so that's why that's it's basically saying it's completely blown out or there's no data there because it's just black so um, it is a little tricky to kind of use your histogram um, in this particular situation so what I do like to do however is zoom in a little bit here on my image just to kind of check in to make sure that things don't look too blown out um, again I would rather the image be a little bit on the dark side because then I can always uh, adjust that in post-production accordingly. So, but this is looking really good. There's a lot of really beautiful detail in the moon there. And you can even see some of the almost blue colors there in that moon. So that's really cool. It's gonna be really beautiful. Um, as you can probably tell, this is not really exactly the best tripod. Um, to be using but you know it really just gets the job done it's the Manfrotto element and I, I just really like it overall just you know for everyday photography and for some of the other astro stuff that I do so it works out really well for me and once again we're gonna adjust a few more settings on here I like to lower I'm gonna lower my shutter speed now to 200 we're gonna do ISO 250 again I don't if, if we raise the ISO too high, it's just going to completely blow out the image. So I don't want that. We want to make sure it's good. Um, we can even try to slightly underexpose it as well too. But I'm going to go with, with 250 ISO. We're going to stick with F11 and we're going to do a shutter speed of 200. So let's go ahead and we already know we're in focus just because we've been, I haven't moved my focus yet, but um, frames right in the center there. So that's good wind is pretty much non-existent right now it's looking really good overall pretty good 
Um, right now, too, I am shooting in crop sensor mode, which is 1.5 magnification on here. Um, and again, this is the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter uh, lens right now. Currently, I am not using a teleconverter. This is just uh, straight out of the camera. Uh, we're shooting in manual mode. And uh, also, this lens as well, too, does offer a few different um, focal rank lengths. So right now, I'm shooting uh, out to infinity. And I do have the um, steady shot off as well. So there's no stabilization whatsoever happening. So that's good. Um, and then for uh, maybe other people that have this particular lens, there's three different modes. Um, normally mode three, I believe, is reserved for faster moving targets like wildlife and things of that nature. Um, I think the second mode is more for panning. And then the, the first mode is more so for still images. I, obviously, my image is moving slightly, but... I find that to be the best mode. So if you have any other experience with that, um, please let me know in the comments, maybe down below, and maybe give me your thoughts on that. I'm just going to fire off a couple more shots here. All right, so we're zoomed in pretty much all the way, and I'm. it's going to be a little difficult to see, but you can definitely see there is some almost like gas-like disturbances around the outside of the moon. So there definitely is going to be some... Um, atmospheric like disturbances and air obviously we'll have some some things to do with that but basically it looks kind of almost like when you look into a fire uh, right on the outskirts of the flame you'll see kind of some disturbance so it's probably some heat um, as I've noted before I am not by any means a physics uh, person or anything like that I didn't didn't go to school to study any of this type of stuff astronomy or anything but um, that's pretty cool to be able to zoom in and just see all of the craters and whatnot. So I'll definitely be uh, probably sharing some more images of these kind of closer up ones too, because it will be harder to see in the YouTube uh, video through my my other camera. Um, and I guess for those wondering, I'm shooting this video with an A6000. I just picked it up just because I wanted to be able to show people, you know, what I'm doing exactly on the camera that I use. Very good. Cool, that's looking beautiful. I think I'm going to take a couple more images and we'll go ahead and start uploading these into post and I will see you there. All right, guys, so I'm here in Lightroom. We've got just a couple images, 11 images that we took from earlier today from our little tutorial. And I just wanted to kind of touch a little bit on a few different things here. So uh, we were talking a little bit about ISO and kind of playing with things and trying not to overblow images and you know, it is really hard to kind of uh, see in your camera if images are blown out just because there's so much darkness around a lot of the images. So I just want to show you in the first image that I took, we're going to go ahead, um, we're in Lightroom, and we're going to go ahead and uh, pull this open real quick. So uh, you can kind of already tell this image, it might be a little bit overexposed, Um so hence the reason why I was kind of suggesting maybe just to take a few different exposures, but um, you can see here that already looks better. I, ju I just literally lowered my exposure by just one stop and it's already made the image much better. So, you know, you can just kind of tell uh, before and after. Oops, wrong way there. We'll go minus one, minus one stop there. So here's another image I took. Um, and once again, you can clearly see that we're, we're just overexposed on this. So right up here, we're at ISO uh, 320, 200 of a second. So let's take a look at some of the other images here and see if we've got a better exposure. All right, so these are looking um, a little bit better. So remember I was talking about just kind of adjusting your exposures and your ISO settings. And, you know, we, we actually had a higher ISO here, um, but we also increased our shutter speed. So you can clearly see that there's a bit of a night and day difference between these two images, you know, just raw images here. Um, so it, it's really important to kind of uh, take a bunch of different shots I feel. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of 
people that have been shooting the moon for a very long time, but I just feel like instead of walking out, taking two pictures and calling it at night, and coming back in and expecting great pictures, uh, play around with it a little bit and kind of see your settings, um, you know, just before you come in and call it a night. But, you know, th these look much better. As far as post-processing, um, you know, I, I try not to do a whole lot. I just, I guess my style is just to try to keep it as natural as possible. I normally kind of go down the line here, controlling temperature. Some people I see, they like their moons a little bit more yellow. You know, some, a lot of people I tend to find it a little bit more natural and a little bit, you know, more white looking. Like I, I prefer this appearance myself. Um, you can continue to adjust your exposures if you wish one way or another. Um, I happen to quite like that exposure on there. You know, your contrast kind of play around with some of these things. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust this accordingly to the way I like it. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of cruise through this real quick and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the image. You can kind of tell, um, you know, I, I like to go extremes, for example, like I like to click on one side and then go back to the other just to kind of compare. Um, just keep in mind, too, that, you know, that's part of post-processing, right? Like this is your image. You're entitled to make it however you wish. Um, it's just because I do something a certain way doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it that way. Um, like, for example, I'm just kind of taking a little second look through the image here. Here's a before and here's an after. Um, I just like the craters to be a little more defined, just a little darker, um, just more a little bit more rich color. Um, so I, I tend to find I, I play around a lot with those, but you know, I also like it to not look too overly processed. You know, I, I make a lot of little subtle changes and we'll call it that. But so uh, once again, here is the raw image. This is exactly what I shot out of the camera. We're at 1 uh, 320th of a second f11 iso 400 and this was at 600 millimeters um, again this was taken with the crop sensor as well too so uh, yep just kind of keep that in mind but here's my final image and i hope you guys found this information to be helpful if you have any other questions uh, comments if you do something a little bit differently and maybe have any tips or recommendations i'm always willing to listen to those um, I am a beginner astrophotographer, and I just I love learning from other people. I love watching other videos. I like learning from other people, too. So if you have any questions, definitely reach out. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Aloha.